In this uh, lecture, we'll talk briefly about the steps in human resource management. One of the first things that has to be done is what's called job analysis. They analyze the jobs within the organization to see how they match the human resources that are available for various assignments. Job analysis determines through observation and study the pertinent inf and pertinent information about a job and the specific task that comprise it, that is the knowledge and skills that are needed, the um, abilities that are necessary, the, the background, that sort of thing, to figure out what exactly we are looking for in a job, what sorts of skills, and then analyzing how many people are needed for all the various kinds of skills. That's the job analysis function. Managers use all this information obtained through job analysis to develop job descriptions. A job description is a formal written explanation of a specific job that usually includes a job title, the task to be performed, for instance, for instance waiting on customers, um, and then they, the relationship with other jobs that that job has, the physical and mental skills required, such as lifting heavy boxes or calculating data, the duties and responsibilities of that job, and the working conditions. Job seekers might turn on to online websites or databases to help them find job descriptions for specific occupations. A job specification describes the qualifications necessary for a specific job in terms of the education, uh, perhaps jobs require a college degree, for example, the experience, personal characteristics, um, uh, jobs sometimes add, sometimes refer to or ask for hardworking, outgoing persons, for example, if it's a customer interface job, and sometimes the physical characteristics. So that's what a job specification would tend to look for. After the job is specified based upon analysis, you want to recruit and select employees. So after forecasting all of these resource needs, you have to go out and start looking for companies. You have a general idea of how many new, new employees the firm has to hire and what sorts of skills need to be done. Recruiting means forming a pool of qualified applicants from which management can select employees. There are two sources from which, uh, from which to develop this pool of applicants, both internal from inside the company and external from the marketplace. Uh, internal sources of applicants include many of the organization's current employees, and it could also include, for example, someone who is looking to be promoted into a new role. The cost of hiring current employees to fulfill job openings is in, inexpensive when compared with the cost of hiring a new external employee, someone from the outside in the marketplace. It's also good for employee, to, for employee morale to know that there's opportunities within the company. External sources of applicants consist of advertisements in newspapers and professional journals and work with employment agencies, perhaps college, vocational schools, etc. Recommendations from current employees, competing firms, and unsolicited applications are also important, as are online websites and social networking sites such as LinkedIn. Internships are also a good way to solicit uh, new employees. There are also hundreds of websites that employees, can, the potential employees can post their resumes or employers can post job openings looking for job seekers. Monster.com. USA Jobs, Simply Hired, Snag a Job, CareerBuilders.com are examples. For managerial and professional positions above the entry level, companies sometimes depend on employment agencies or executive search firms, sometimes called headhunters, which specify, which specialize in luring qualified people from other companies to work within your own company. So that's the general steps, job analysis, job specification, those sorts of things. Um, and then job descriptions, and then you go and recruit and fill your spots. Let's talk a little bit more about the selection and placement process in the next lecture.